Well, All right, let's take the partisan political pulse of this controversy from three MPs on the campaign trail. Arif, Aran Arif Varani is a liberal candidate from Toronto, and that's where we find him. Lisa Ray, a conservative candidate from Milton. She's on FaceTime, but probably in, in Milton somewhere. And Jenny Kwan, an NDP candidate from Vancouver. I want to do a quick go around on Trudeau's second apology. Some people say this is much better than the first effort. Is it worthy of acceptance or does it still fall short? I'll start with you, Lisa Ray. So what's the most revelatory piece of this second apology or apology 2.0 is that he didn't level with the Canadian public last night. His apology was weak because he used euphemisms for what actually happened. He didn't want to take responsibility. So he had to come back out today and he said the words that he said, but at this point, he's just saying words to try to get through this campaign. The reality is he is not being upfront and honest with Canadians about how many times, when did it happen? And quite frankly, this notion of not knowing in 2001 whether or not it was wrong does go to judgment of the prime minister of this country. So apology aside, whether or not we accept it, I don't believe that's the issue. The issue, quite frankly, is can you believe and can you trust this man after the last 24 hours of changing stories and trying to make it up as he goes? All right, Jenny Kwan, your thoughts on the second apology and the first, I guess. Well, I'll say this. I think that Canadians are quite taken aback by what they have witnessed uh, with the um, prime minister's um, pictures uh, and the uh, mocking of um, brown people, black people, racial uh, people. I think that what is really important, of course, uh, is this message from Jagmeet uh, Singh, our leader himself, and it's to say to all Canadians, and particularly those who have experienced uh, racial discrimination, people who experience that pain and that hurt, and to say that you are loved, that this is not acceptable in our Canadian society. We don't believe that Canadians uh, on, on the whole um, have those um, perspectives. But what's really important is to say to the people today who have experienced racism, who are experienced racism, experiencing racism today, that they are loved, that we will work together to create a better society. Uh, and, and this is the key message that I think uh, we need to focus in on. Arif, I don't know if you were one of the MPs that uh, Justin Trudeau reached out to and consulted last night, but what went through your mind when you saw these pictures? And what more think, do you think needs to be done to make this uh, issue go away? So uh, the Prime Minister reached out to uh, many members of the caucus, including the Muslim members, the brown skin members, the black skin members, the Asian members. There's a lot of diversity in our caucus, and I think that's a good thing. I think the second statement that he made today shows that he reflected upon the last 12, 14 hours. He's heard from people. It is a hurtful image. It is an impactful image. Racism is not something that anyone likes experiencing. Myself and Jenny, I presume we both experienced this. I know I have. Uh, it is hurtful, it has an impact, and it affects all of us. And when you see an image like that, it has an impact. And the Prime Minister recognized that. I think today he used the words that he needed to use, talking about the racist overtones of blackface and, bla and brownface, about the legacy of that. And I think what he has done is he has said that he is working to do better. And what he needs to do going forward is implement the policies as a leader that can demonstrate to Canadians that we will overcome this issue, both at a political level, but also in terms of a policy level, to make sure that there's fairness for all Canadians, regardless of what their skin color looks like. Lisa Ray, I want to ask you, though, I mean, just uh, four or five days ago, your leader said, you know, a remorseful apology would be enough for his candidates. Uh, isn't it time that you said, well, Justin Trudeau sounds remorseful. He has apologized for all the incidents. Isn't it time to accept that apology and move on? Well, I will tell you something about Andrew Scheer. I've worked next to him for the last two years. We've had situations where he's had to make tough decisions about transgressions by our own people in our caucus. And I can tell you one thing, that forgiveness is, is there and we will give forgiveness. But if you lie about what's happened, you are going to suffer the consequences. And that is what Andrew was talking about. It's the context. And the context of this is the prime minister he deceived Canadians. He covered it up specifically. He didn't even tell liberals themselves that he had this in his past because of his own embarrassment. Quite frankly, that just means he's he's apologizing that he got caught. That's what it comes down to. Jenny, what 
Jenny, what more needs to be done? I mean, uh, he, what more can he do uh, than what he's already done? Two apologies isn't enough. What, what, what more do you want from him? Well, I think one thing that's important to note, uh, of course, one of the photos uh, was uh, taken when he was a teacher. Um, and I keep thinking about this, right? Because as a child, to be honest, at school, I experienced uh, racism as well, discrimination as well. Kids made fun of me. But when a teacher embarks in this kind of behavior, what does that mean? What message is it being given to the students themselves? And what are the implications of that? So I do worry about it from that perspective. You know, teachers are, of course, role models. We look up to teachers. I looked up to teachers when I was a kid. Uh, and so, you know, there are these kinds of implications that are out there. Racism is very real today in our society, in, in Canadian society. Uh, even just a couple of years ago, I had someone come and tell me right to my face that they don't like the color of my skin and to tell me to go back to my own country. So people are experiencing that today. So this is what's really worrying me. That's what's really worrying, I know, uh, my leader, Jagmi Singh. No. Uh, and that's why we want to send yeah. a, a strong message of love to everyone. And we all have responsibility to ensure that we stamp out racism and discrimination whenever we see it, wherever we see it. Well, okay, but I can't let you get away from the question. What do you need from Justin Trudeau to say, I forgive you, I accept your apology, let's get back to talking about issues that impact Canadians now? I think that's the question is actually for Canadians to decide uh, about what do they need for the prime minister to do uh, to address this issue. Uh, and I think just before we got on the panel, um, others were saying that this will ultimately be a decision before the electorate. And of course, issues are very important. Racism is a very important issue that is faced by us as Canadian society today. All right. Arif, does it concern you that your leader can't remember how many times he's applied blackface or brownface? And, I mean, we even got this Lepress story saying there's more to come. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but I'd certainly think I'd remember putting on black or brownface. Don't you think that's a little curious? I think it's a it's a concern, Don. But what I think is important is that we've talked about on this panel this idea of, of judgment, the judgment of the prime minister, and how Canadians will judge him on October 21st. And what I would reiterate on that score is that, is that I have absolute confidence in this prime minister because he has been willing to take on issues of racism that Jenny was just talking about. We had a long a long push during the study on Islamophobia and systemic racism and religious discrimination to launch a national anti-racism strategy. We did just that in June of this year. We had a long discussion about open and inclusive Sorry. immigration, and we did just that by implementing a policy Sorry, where I, we accepted okay. refugees into this country. But we've had a long discussion about anti-black racism. Well, well, we're talking about blackface, Don, and we've had a discussion about anti-black racism. We've put $44 million into combating racism against black people in this country over the last two budgets. That's what I'm judging the prime minister on. I think that's what Canadians will be judging the prime minister on. Uh, I, I, I do Lisa want Ray, to interject you... just... Uh, I'll let Jenny... I do, may I interject? Sorry, I just want to interject for just one minute here. We actually also saw, by the way, discrimination uh, from across the border, from Trump, right, who actually came forward uh, and attacked the uh, Muslim community, as an example, brought in uh, discriminatory policies against the uh, immigrant community and the refugee community. And yet, um, during that entire period, our prime minister actually was awfully silent and we had to push him and push him in the House of Commons to actually speak up and rise up to speak against that kind of racism by uh, the, the president of the United States. So we have to be consistent here in terms of that effort. And the prime minister himself needs to find the courage to actually speak up against racism uh, and discrimination all the time, not just some of the time. And on that score, I would say, Don, Please. Justin Trudeau has had the courage to utter the words Islamophobia, something that Andrew Scheer has studiously guarded against using. It's important to call out anti-Muslim hatred for what it is, and it is Islamophobic. And the Prime Minister, the Justin Trudeau has used that term repeatedly in the House of Commons because it is necessary to call out racism for what it is. Don? Okay, and yet when he met Ray. with Trump, yeah. he has yet yeah. to actually raise that issue when he actually met with Trump. Okay. Don? If yes. we could... I would just say this, that the prime minister has known for many, many years, 25 years, that he has partaken in this kind of behavior. He deliberately withheld it, not only from the people who vetted him in 2008, he's withheld it from Canadians. And at the same time, only when he get caught, 
did he come forward to apologize. However, it didn't stop him from every step of the way trying to sermonize the rest of us on what he viewed as the standard to be held to when he didn't have any intent of being held to the exact same standard. And that is hypocrisy. You know, Arif, that's a good point. Isn't it hypocritical for your party's war room to be discharging all kinds of videos and tweets about other candidates who they say are homophobic or racist, and then your own leader has got this in his, in his skeleton in his closet? What, how on earth do you respond to that? Isn't that hypocrisy 101? What I would say, Don, is that obviously there are certain microscopes that people are under. Uh, the four, three of us as candidates are, is one level. Leaders of parties is a, is a different level. A, a prime minister who's seeking re-election is under probably the largest microscope in the country. Obviously, that comes with it's certain a standards. Level, isn't it? Obviously, that comes with certain standards of behavior and certain uh, expectations on the part of the Canadian public, and that's a good thing. But uh, what I would reiterate is that people have made mistakes in their past. I'm sure all three of us, all four of us, including you, Don, have made mistakes in their past. The mistake that Justin Trudeau has admitted to is an important one. He has indicated that it is unacceptable. It was wrong then. It is wrong. Now, it is a hallmark to a racist era of minstrel shows. Blackface is never acceptable, neither is brownface. That is what the Prime Minister has stated. We, uh, um, as the Liberal candidates and the Liberal caucus, have full faith right. in his commitment to fighting discrimination and racism wherever it appears in this country. Last word to you, Jenny. Is this a, a real act of hypocrisy by the Prime Minister to lecture others and then have this uh, hanging over his head? Well, I think the prime minister really has to reflect internally about his actions. I think that Canadians are quite taken aback uh, in waking up in the morning to find these images about their prime minister. Uh, and uh, on several occasions, and maybe more, we don't know. Uh, and at the end of the day, the message that's being sent to Canadians and for the people who are and who have been hurt by racism, by, by being mocked, uh, about who they are. Okay. And we need to make sure that we move to a path to say that Canada is a country that welcomes everyone and that it, we're a country okay. that celebrates right. diversity. Got to go. Thank you all. Appreciate your insight on this uh, amazing story. Uh, we'll probably be talking about it again soon. Thank you.